Ice James from Gist Piano Center, and I'm here to show you how to set up a Roland Digital Piano Lab conferencing system today. We've already got the pianos assembled, the benches are put together, and we're all ready to go. So now we're going to install the hub, the controller, the individual boxes on each piano, wire the whole thing together, and then give you some basic lab setup advice. So stick around, we'll show you how to set up your Roland Digital Piano Lab. Roland's lab conferencing system usually comes in a couple of boxes. Inside the heaviest one is the hub, the controller, the AC adapter for the hub, and the mounting hardware for the hub. The first thing you want to do is to establish your hub, since all of the wiring will connect to it. Remove the hub from the box and decide on a place for it. You have two mounting options. You may choose to affix rubber feet to the hub, as shown here, and place it in a temporary location. For security reasons, you may decide to permanently mount the hub to the back of your teacher instrument, as we're doing here. Secure the mounting screws, since they're easy to lose, and unwrap the mounting hardware. Next, attach the mounting hardware to the hub. Now you're ready to attach the hub to the teacher's instrument. You'll need some 3 quarter inch wood screws to fasten the hub. Make sure you use screws with large enough heads to hold the hub in place. Attach the hub to the bottom of the piano as shown. Be careful to avoid speakers, screws, or other items when you place the hub. Now onto the student pianos. In the heavy box, you'll find three important items for each student piano. A long data cable, the connector box, and a short audio cable. To avoid confusion, I recommend placing one of each on each student piano before you do anything else. Depending on the orientation of the pianos in your lab, you may choose to place the box differently than we do here. Keep in mind, though, that the short audio cable is short. It'll have to reach from the headphones port under the base end of the keyboard to your connector box. So place the connector box somewhat close to the base side of the piano. Also, it's important to attach the connector box so the data port and all of the large holes are facing the back side of the piano. You want the small holes for the headsets to face front. Attach the box with your 3 quarter inch screws. Now, grab your short audio cable and insert the L-shaped end into one of the headphones ports on the piano, doesn't matter which one. Insert the other end into the left stereo port on the connector box and secure the loose cable. While we're here, we're going to make sure the tension screw is properly set under each pedal box to prevent wear and tear by heavy pedaling. Remember not to make it too snug, you don't want to high center the piano. In this case, the teacher's piano has a connector box of its own underneath the bass keys. I'm going to attach the lab connector box to the right of it. Uncoil the data cable and plug it into the data port on the connector box. There will only be one port that fits. The data cable is 25 feet long. Run it along a sensible path to the hub. And keep in mind that at some point you will have to safely secure these cables to prevent tripping. Attach each cable to the corresponding point on the hub. You should discuss the configuration and numbering with the instructors. Larger labs will require additional expansion cards and cables. Next, assemble the hub's AC adapter and plug it in. It's probably a good time to turn the hub on as well. Remove the lab controller from the box. You may choose to secure it to a stand with the included screws, or you may wish to simply place it on the teacher's piano and plug it in as we have. Roland refers to the controller as the remote, and there's a special port on the hub for it. Plug the controller into the remote port on the hub. As you might have guessed, the lighter box is filled with headsets. Open the box, remove the headsets from their containers, and place the headsets on the pianos. Look for the little symbols at the end of each headset cord. You have to plug the headphones cord into the headphones port and the mic cord into the mic port. Now that everything is assembled, it's time to test the lab. Turn all of the pianos on, the hub should already be on, and start a demo song on each piano. Now test each piano by pressing its corresponding number on the lab controller. Touch it once to turn the piano on, you'll see the light above the number come on, and touch it a second time to turn it off, you should see the light above the number go out. This will test that all of your pianos are correctly connected to the system. If you heard each piano through the teacher's headset, then everything is fine and you're ready to move on. Go to the lab controller and press all of the buttons to turn the pianos on in the system. Now, put the student headsets on one by one and make sure you can hear the piano as well as the teacher's piano. The teacher's piano should still be playing the demo song and you can mash a few keys on the piano you're at just to make sure it's right. If all is well, then you're done. Just remember to recommend good chord management to the school. Keep in mind that different schools may have different chord management policies and it's important to follow their rules. And schedule your lab training with Roland right away. 
Well, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got some great information on how to set up a Roland lab conferencing system. But if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us anytime, and we'll catch you with the next video on the GIST YouTube channel.